This is a tale about the most powerful drug kingpin in history, born and raised in the United States. He was once a prominent high school football star in his hometown of Laredo, Texas. However, several years later, he became one of the most wanted criminals in Mexico. His life story seems like it was taken straight out of a Hollywood script. He worked closely with some of the most powerful drug kingpins in Mexico's history. His good looks, charisma, and social skills allowed him to live a life of luxury and seamlessly blend in with Mexico's elite. Nevertheless, his ruthless nature led him to engage in a deadly battle against the notorious Zetas for control over one of the most profitable drug corridors along the U.S.-Mexico border. The brutality he displayed towards his enemies was captured on camera. The U.S. government estimates that he made at least $192 million in profits during his criminal career. How did a promising football star end up in a maximum security prison in the U.S.? What were his final words before going to jail? Who inherited his criminal empire? In this episode of Illicit Investigations, we delve into the life of the most powerful American-born kingpin who established a formidable criminal organization near his hometown of Laredo, Texas. We will uncover the secret alliances he forged with influential Mexican drug lords like Arturo Beltran Leva and Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, as well as his consolidation of drug routes from Colombia all the way to Memphis, Tennessee and Atlanta, Georgia. Join us as we unravel this gripping story that could easily be a plot for a Hollywood movie. On August 30th, 2010, Edgar Valdez Villarreal, also known as La Barbie, an American-born drug kingpin, was captured in a ranch near Mexico City. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? He was one of the most wanted criminals in the hemisphere. Hours after his arrest, a Mexican law enforcement officer interviewed him on camera. ¿A qué se dedica? Um. Edgar Valdez Villarreal was a promising high school football player in Laredo, Texas, a city bordering the Mexican state of Tamaulipas. During his youth in the 1990s, across the Rio Grande, the powerful golf cartel was gaining strength in Nuevo Laredo. His football coach at the United High School nicknamed him La Barbie because of his good-looking appearance. However, while succeeding in his sports team, he was getting into trouble on the streets. At 18, tragedy struck when he caused a fatal car accident. Two years later, he faced marijuana possession charges and received a suspended seven-year sentence. At 22, while on probation, he was arrested for reckless, high-speed, intoxicated driving. Two years after that, a federal indictment accused him of intent to distribute marijuana, and he flew to Mexico where he began a sharp upward climb into a criminal career. By the year 2000, at the age of 27, he was operating a cocaine ring in Nuevo Laredo, Tamaulipas, with customers in New Orleans and Memphis. When American drug distributors traveled to meet him, he would pick them up at the border in a caravan of three Chevy Suburbans equipped with police lights and sirens. Several armed men using AK-47s guarded the vehicles as well as the residence where the meetings took place. Some of La Barbie's security guards were Mexican law enforcement officers. Valdez set up this elaborate display to make an impression. He wanted people to fear him and know that he was in control and above the law. One of his biggest customers was Memphis gangster Craig Petiz, who received shipments of cocaine packed in crates in tractor trailers every two weeks. The cargo vehicles returned to Nuevo Laredo packed with cash, as he revealed to the Mexican officer. ¿Cómo lo hacía para mover tanto dinero en efectivo? En trailers. Years later, Petiz fled to Mexico, where Valdez provided him refuge. However, Petiz was ultimately arrested and extradited back to the United States, where he was sentenced to life imprisonment on federal charges, including murder, kidnapping, drug distribution, and money laundering. By 2002, La Barbie had formed a partnership with a businessman named Carlos Montemayor, who had an infrastructure of trucks and drivers for cocaine transportation across the United States. Valdez also invested in the construction of luxury residences, real estate, and he purchased two ranches in Nuevo Laredo, one of which included a mini-zoo. But in 2002, the Gulf Cartel dispatched its enforcement arm, the Zetas, to gain control over the drug trade in the Nuevo Laredo corridor. A war between La Barbie and the Zetas emerged. Violence escalated in the area, resulting in numerous deaths and disappearances, prompting La Barbie to flee to Monterrey. 
In Monterey, Valdez met a former state police officer who introduced him to Arturo Beltran Leyva, a powerful kingpin and high-ranking member of the rising Sinaloa cartel, along with Joaquin El Chapo Guzman and Ismael El Mayo Zambada at the time. During an initial meeting in Mexico City, Valdez and Beltran established a rapport. Subsequently, Valdez moved to Mexico City. He discovered that Beltran Leva owned a house with horse stables but no horses, which gave him an idea to win Beltran's favor. Together with Carlos Montemayor, Valdez purchased two horses and had them delivered to Beltran. They also sent a horse trainer, who stayed with Beltran for several days to educate him about the horses. The plan succeeded, as Beltran loved the gift and Valdez was invited to conduct business with him directly. La Barbie had numerous meetings with Beltran Leyva in Mexico City, Acapulco, and at Beltran's ranch in Ixtapa de la Sal. He became known as Beltran Leyva Guy and met other leaders of the Sinaloa cartel. Chapo del Mayo, ¿Cómo al Azul. ¿Cómo es que conoce a Chapo Guzmán? Este, en una junta. El Azul is the alias for Juan José Esparagoza Moreno, one of the founders of the Sinaloa cartel and an old friend of El Mayo and El Chapo. His primary role in the organization has been to create and maintain political connections. In 2003, Labarbi dispatched some associates to Colombia to establish cocaine deals with drug traffickers such as Juan Carlos Ramirez Abadía, also known as Chupeta, a former leader of the Norte del Valle cartel. In Colombia, Labarbi gained the nickname El Tigre, or the Tiger, due to his fierce war against the Zetas. To stabilize cocaine shipments through the Nueva Laredo Corridor, Labarbi asked his friend Arturo Beltran Leva to arrange a meeting with OCL Cardenas Guillén, the leader of the Gulf Cartel who, at the time, had control over the Zetas. Cardenas Guillén allowed Labarbi to use the corridor as long as he paid a tax to the Gulf Cartel. However, shortly after, in March 2003, Cardenas Guillén was arrested and the agreement fell apart. The Zetas became more aggressive and started pushing La Barbie out of Nuevo Laredo. La Barbie utilized his contacts to rally support against the Zetas. Armando Valencia Cornelio, a leader of the Millennial Cartel, along with El Chapo Guzman, El Mayo Zambada, and El Azul, agreed to back up La Barbie and sent 300 men to Nueva Laredo to battle against the Zetas. As a result, violence increased in the border town. Meanwhile, La Barbie took advantage of his association with Arturo Beltran Leva to gain control of Acapulco. He struck a deal with Colombian kingpin Harold Mauricio Poveda, also known as the Rabbit, due to his cocaine kilos being marked with the Playboy logo. Valdez was importing three tons of cocaine per month using speedboats, airplanes, submarines, and cargo ships. He established an office in Panama where his associates monitored the deals with the Colombians. In Mexico City and Acapulco, Valdez cultivated his image as a wealthy businessman, dressing in suits, socializing with models and actresses, and frequenting popular nightclubs like Babyo in Acapulco, a place where celebrities in the Mexican elite gathered. He displayed a flashy lifestyle but was also extremely violent. In this video, he interrogates Zeta's members who had come to Acapulco to kill him and were later assassinated. ¿Por qué La Barbie and his associate Carlos Montemayor expanded their distribution network to Atlanta, Georgia, one of the biggest cocaine hubs in the U.S. After arriving from Colombia, the drugs were taken to safe houses in Acapulco, then transported by trailer trucks to Nuevo Laredo and crossed into the U.S., reaching cities like Dallas, Memphis, and Atlanta. As the business grew, La Barbie spent a substantial amount of money on security. He had several state and local law enforcement officials on his payroll to act as bodyguards and intervene if he were ever stopped by local authorities. He maintained a security detail of 20 to 30 men who carried automatic weapons. He received monthly shipments of weapons from Texas, including AK-47s, AR-15s, pistols, M-16s with grenade launchers, night vision equipment, 50 caliber rifles designed for vehicle mounting, body armor, and rocket-propelled grenades. He employed a gunsmith who converted rifles from semi-automatic to fully automatic. 
On January 21, 2008, Alfredo Beltran Leyva, also known as El Mochomo and one of Arturo's brothers, was arrested in Culiacan, Sinaloa. Arturo and his brothers blamed El Chapo Guzman for this and split from the Sinaloa cartel. A new war emerged, this time between the Beltran Leyva brothers and El Chapo Guzman and El Mayo Zambada. La Barbie maintained his distance but was closer friends with Arturo. However, in early 2009, La Barbie's relationship with Arturo Beltran Leyva started to weaken because Arturo was becoming increasingly paranoid and suspected treason from everyone around him. On December 16, 2009, Arturo Beltran Leyva was killed during a firefight with a unit of the Mexican Navy at his home in Cuernavaca. Before getting killed, Arturo called La Barbie to ask for assistance. Antes que se murió, me habló a mí por teléfono. No, no, pues le dije, le decía yo que se entregara, que para qué le decía, para qué ya está muerto y dice que no, que no, que no se iba a entregar. ¿Le habló cuando estaba el operativo? Sí. Todavía no entraba en su departamento, pero decía que estaba rodeado, que iban a pelear y que mandáramos gente. ¿Y qué hizo usted? No, no, yo, no, 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 nada. Cuando usted le, le, le comenta que es mejor que se entregue, ¿él qué le dice? No, no, que, que prefería morirse, <coughs> que nos iban a dejar. Y, y después me pasó otro que estaba ahí y que no, que no dejaba salir a nadie. Él no dejó salir a nadie de ahí. Él se drogaba mucho, ya, es, ya al último, sí, cuando estaba conmigo, que anda, así que andamos juntos, nunca se, nunca se drogaba. One month after Arturo's death, another episode marked La Barbie's criminal life. On January 25, 2010, one of La Barbie's lieutenants, Jose Jorge Balderas Garza, also known as JJ, was partying at the famous nightclub Bar Bar in Mexico City when he got into an argument with Paraguayan soccer star Salvador Cabañas, who was playing for Club America in Mexico at the time. Eran amigos ellos dos, pero pues como que ese día andaba de malas las cabañas. Se comenzaron a alegar. During the discussion, JJ shot Cabañas in the head. Although he didn't kill him, Cabañas fell into a coma, effectively ending his successful career. La Barbie had to hide JJ to protect him. Después lo metió en una oficina mía. ¿En dónde? En Atizapán. I took him for three months, more or less. At that time, La Barbie was one of the most wanted criminals in Mexico. Authorities had located him on several occasions, but he managed to escape. Finally, at the age of 37, Valdez was arrested by Mexican federal police on August 30th, 2010, at a ranch he owned near Mexico City. He was later extradited to the United States on September 30th, 2015. He entered a guilty plea and is currently serving a sentence in Coleman Maximum Security Prison in Florida with a scheduled release date of July 2056. U.S. federal prosecutors calculated that La Barbie made at least $192 million in profits. La Barbie's legacy continues. His son, Edgar Valdez Beltran, has already made headlines with his flashy lifestyle in Mexico. According to Mexican officials, he's a narco junior associated with the Chapitos, the sons of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. In 2016, members of the cartel de Jalisco Nueva Generación kidnapped the Chapitos and several of their associates at La Leche restaurant in the Mexican Pacific resort town of Puerto Vallarta. Among those kidnapped was Edgar Valdez Beltran. The story continues. This is Illicit Investigations. Subscribe now to our channel to go beyond the headlines.